And welcome back to part 43 of our Pokemon podcast. Yes, we are finally nearing the end of this journey. And we're about to go on victory. Wait a minute. I felt like we did this last time. Oh, yeah, I left. Right, because I'm mm -hmm. an asshole. You would. Well, I wanted to go to heal. And as well as, uh, well, I like saving up Pokemon centers. We will get me on a victory road by this episode, though. I do guarantee that. Dan, I hope I remember the last four episodes of the series. Oh, I spoiled the number. Shit! Well, it's so close oh. to the end, people that know the game should have seen it coming. I can break right. down this road! Yay! And watch, Professor Ruka comes up and says, You can't use that here! I can ride my bike on the water! Have you seen Sword and Shield? I can ride it on the water! Damn it. Oops. Fine. Ah, uh, but yeah. I don't know why. Today I was thinking about Quentin Tarantino movies. Hmm. Yeah. Which ones? Um, more so the Kill Bill ones. Ah. Uh, because, well, I think you might have heard my opinion before. I'm not the biggest fan of those movies. My I mean, the first the first one was good. Uh, second one was eh. It's more the second one I've seen. That could be why. But I do actually have somewhat of a defense for it. Like, I don't know if you'd agree on it. Do you think the Kill Bill would make a better game than a movie? You know, strangely enough, I can kind of see that. Because, like, I feel like a lot of what makes Kill Bill are the action set pieces, which, in my defense, I will say, Kill Bill has some of the best action set pieces in all of movies. I will give it that. And Uma Thurman acts out all of that very well. Honestly, it's probably the best thing she's done in her career. Yeah. But as a movie itself, I didn't think too much of Kill Bill. It just That's fair. Like, yeah, and I don't think too much of the plot. Like, it's very straightforward. It's like, yes, her ex-fiance tried to kill her. Now she's out for revenge. That is basically it. And then she goes on from set piece to set piece to set piece to eventually build up to killing Bill. Mm-hmm. Oh, also, I forgot to mention the main reason why that came on my mind. You know they're gonna make a third one, apparently, right? Oh, God. Like, that's the other problem, like... It seemed to take two movies to tell the story, which seems a little weird. But the second one seemed like it had a decent enough ending. Now what, are you yeah. gonna say the one you killed in the second movie wasn't really Bill? Like Again? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like... And apparently Uma Thurman is being asked to come back for it. And I do think uh, Quentin Tarantino is behind it again. And don't yeah, get but at that... It's like, at that point, though, it's just like... It's been, like, what, like, 20-something years, like, at least since the what, previous one? Yeah, and Uma Thurman's definitely looking older, unfortunately, so... Mm -hmm. I don't know how much she could still enact all the physical stunts. I mean, if she could pull it off, power to her, but... Right. The movie feels unnecessary, and, well... Oh, the second one felt unnecessary. Yeah. But they came out of the sequel very quickly. It still had good acting choreography, so... As much as I'm not a big fan of those movies, I will not give discredit to those action scenes. They are beautiful. Well, I think the second one actually came out during the 90s, actually. Oh, was it that early? Shit. I kind of thought it was, like, 2001 or something. Because I, I, I know the first I know the first one was during the uh, 70s or 80s. Really? Yeah, let me check that, actually. I was say, I thought both of the first two Kill Bill movies were very close to each other. Maybe I'm wrong. But... I was say, that doesn't sound like... That doesn't sound right, because that'd make Uma Thurman really young if it came out in the 70s or 80s. Yeah, I don't know. I just know I do like a lot of Quentin Tarantino movies, but usually the Kill Bills are pretty low on my totem pole. Not the worst movie he's done, but... Not exactly a highlight like Pulp Fiction or something like that. Oh, yeah, Pulp Fiction, there's no contest with that one. Yeah, that is my favorite. I get what Koshi was saying about one of his friends saying he wasn't a big fan of it. I can understand that. It is a bit of a slow burn. Oh, never mind, actually. They were both close to each other in release, right? Uh-huh. In fact, they were both, um, respectively, 2003 and 2004. Wow, faster than I thought. I kind of thought it was two years apart, but no, one year. I guess maybe yeah. maybe he thought about doing the whole thing as one movie, but then 
there's so much footage. He's like, you know what? Let's just make it a second movie. Yeah. Quentin Tarantino is a very interesting director, though. And I've noticed on the internet people have caught out his uh, foot fetish. I mean, hell, the, I mean, hell, the first one was called Kill Bill Volume 1. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. And originally it was going to be one, but there was so much. He's like, you know what? Let's just split into two movies. That makes that makes a little more sense in context if that was the case. But yeah, mm -hmm. I've been hearing talks they want to do a third movie. I'm just like, okay, that's... It's too late and extremely unnecessary. <laughs> Tarantino, although I, I don't usually distrust what he does, because he makes fucking damn good movies. I do love Pulp Fiction, although I can admit for some people it can be a little weird to watch because of, well, Quentin Tarantino's storytelling style. You don't necessarily start at the beginning. You'll start at the end or in the middle, and it flashes back and forward all over the place to piece things together. He usually does it really well, though. Although the worst part of Pulp Fiction was when Quentin Tarantino himself was in the movie. Cause that was the that was the weird scene of the guy in the kitchen, if I remember. Yeah. Ah, uh, that movie's a classic though. It is a shame that Samuel Jackson didn't get anything nominated for that. He was yeah. great in that movie. Yes, he was. Also, can I just say real quick, the faces on Executor here are like... Yeah, they're horrifying. <laughs> yeah. This is like, you're gonna die, motherfucker! Unless I'm the rivals, in which case, I don't have a lot of good moves! <laughs> <laughs> Does he look like a bitch? Does he look like a bitch?! <laughs> oh, God. What country are you from, boy? What? What? Why ain't no country I never heard of? You speak English or what? <laughs> English, what the fuck up do you speak it? God. That opening scene really is so memorable. Like that? Oh. God, Quentin Tarantino really does make such good movies, and that one is a standout. As much as I'm not mm -hmm. a fan of John Travolta either, but. Then again, well, that was. That was the film that brought him back in the spotlight. After Greece, yeah, he was almost forgotten a bit after Greece. And then Paul well, that's because uh, after Greece he did have a singing career and right. emphasis on had. Mm -hmm, yeah, it does sound familiar. I think we talked about that before. Yeah. Oh, yikes. <laughs> then again, then again, he almost lost his career again after doing, you know, uh, shit. I hate the movie so much, I forgot its name. The one that uh, was hairs based... Hairspray? No, no, no. Although that wasn't great either. The one that was based off Scientology. Um... Oh! Battlefield Earth. Battlefield Earth, yeah. I was gonna say After Earth. I was like, no, no, that's the one with Jaden Smith. That's not what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, that, that, no, After Earth, that's the one with Will Smith, yeah. And Jaden Smith, his kid. That was like the first movie his kid was right. in. And now his kid's a right. rapper. Uh, no, his first mo the first movie he was in was actually Pursuit of Happiness. Oh, right! I forgot about that. Well, I guess more like it was a serious acting role after Earth was his first. Right. Cause, well, uh, I thought Pursuit of Happiness was pretty serious. Yeah, that was more of a Will Smith movie to me, though. True. But yeah, it was... Pursuit of Happiness was good. Oh, I, I love Pursuit of Happiness. After Earth, though, was... That was a hard one to watch. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I tried watching it, I was just like... Hmm. It just feels like he's just listening to Will Smith, and that's like half the movie. It's like... What? What the fuck? What the fuck? Also, the name of this Will Smith's character, like... It, it sounded like... It sounded like a third grader came up with that. Well, then again, people have been questioning some of the movie roles Will Smith has taken lately. I get why. Uh, I think one in particular that people really didn't uh, want him to do, but he turned out to be an okay for that role. Are we talking about the Suicide Squad one, or...? I was talking about uh, the Aladdin live-action remake. Oh, right, 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 well... 
people thought he was going to try to be like Robin Williams, which, thankfully, he didn't. I guess no, he knew he better. Is a, yeah, he knew better, especially since, you know, it would... In a sense, like... Like, he knows better because it's just like, you know, to kind of try to be Robin Williams with that kind of role, it just feels like it would be massively disrespectful to him. Yeah. If you tried to do it nowadays, yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Robin Williams, rest in peace, by the way, of course. Yes, of course. You heard they're apparently doing a uh, Pinocchio live-action remake? or planning it? Yeah, I did remember hearing about that with uh, Guillermo del Toro uh, being at the helm. Yes. And, uh, well, people are thinking, because they came up with a cast choice for uh, Geppetto. Tom mm. Hanks. Which will be fine. Yeah. You know what? I can actually see that. But people, as soon as he got announced, he was like, man, if only it could have been Robin Williams. It's like, you know? He probably would have been a very good fit for that, too. He probably would have been, yeah. Wait, wait a minute. Am I double-kicking Lapras with Jolteon? What the fuck am I doing? I mean, it <laughs> is part ice, so... It does work. But Jolteon's not a very physical-based fighter. <laughs> and it's also not a fighting type, so... Yeah, no stab. I did get rid of Sand Attack for that. I'm probably gonna get rid of that for Pin Missile when that eventually comes along. Yeah. Which I think is the next move. But yeah, I... I'm really curious how that Pinocchio live-action remake will go. Because that movie yeah. could... That was based off a of really old story from the 1800s. Yeah, um, because there were, like, two sets of different, uh, stories. Uh, from, like, Fairy Tale House. There was obviously the Brothers Grimm stuff, uh, mm -hmm. which is the stuff like uh, Cinderella, Snow White. Yeah, I've heard Cinderella retold a lot of times. They did a live-action one of those back in, like, the 60s, I think, and my mom loved it as a kid. Yeah. Um, well, there was, there was a lot of adaptations with, uh, this is definitely one of those stories that's been adapted so many times. Yeah, it feels like a story that everybody knows. I mean, hell, it's even been adapted in multiple languages, too. Not surprising. I mean, it is a another timeless classic. It's a, it's a true story of romance of a freaking poor orphan having to deal with her rich, snobby siblings and family. And then she takes a night thanks to her fairy godmother to go out to a ball to meet a prince of her dreams. And, well, she falls in love with him, but unfortunately, her curse wears off, so she has to leave. She, le she leaves a slipper behind, and the prince goes out of his way to find her, and finds her amongst being still the poor one amongst her entire family. Yeah. It's a true romantic classic. Also, hi, Moltres. Yes, we finally found Moltres. And he fire yeah, spun me! <laughs> yep. Yeah, he's just randomly here in Victory Road. Yeah, I always thought it was weird. Like, I... When I first replayed the game, I kind of thought he was going to be in the bur in the Pokemon in the uh, Burn Tower. Because that makes sense. No. I mean, that was more because of what happened with the other Legendary left, but... I mean, it was called the Burn Tower! It sounds like it makes a lot of sense. Well, first off, the Burn Tower is, uh, Johto. Oh. Well, whatever the building is in Cinnabar. God the, damn it. The mansion? Yes, the mansion. That's the one, yeah. Well, actually, here's the thing. Originally, Moltres was supposed to be appearing in the Sevi Island. Ah. And the Sevi Islands were originally supposed to be in the game. But due to space limitations... They never showed up. They never showed up in the original game. Ah, so uh, that's why they're in the remake. Yep. Uh -huh. And that's where Moltres is relocated. That makes a lot of sense. Thank God I still have my Pidgeot knowing sand attack. <laughs> That's one helpful thing to do against legendaries. Now time for Blizzard! <laughs> <laughs> See? It won't do a lot of damage, so against a legendary, it actually works out! Also, it says super effective when it says normally effective, but whatever. I'm not gonna question it. <laughs> no! Yeah. Damn you, I'm you killed him! I'm still questioning you having Blizzard on your freaking Marowak. 
Again, nobody else could learn it, and I didn't want to give it to Blastoise because he had Ice Beam. And I wanted the 100% move on him in particular. But... Plus, Blizzard... It was, Blizzard's only a 90 accuracy in this game. I know it's still good, but... Just in case, you know? Just in case. <laughs> and you also had a better chance of freezing. Yeah, that's why I tried to use Marowak on the Legendary. Because it would do less damage, therefore giving him more chances to freeze him. See, I thought about it. Kind of. Ugh, no you didn't. I did it in my blue playthrough too and it worked out, goddammit. I only froze one Pokemon, and it ended up working out. Oh god, I remember what happens now. Oh shit. At this moment that he knew yep. He fucked up. I ran away. <laughs> Fuck! Let's do it again! <laughs> yep. I was gonna say, it was either my Pokemon fainted I ran, or I just ran. It was a complete accident. <laughs> Oh my god, MJ! Round two! <laughs> Wait! Yes! God damn it! You beat me from a ring out last time! Not today! Take two! I'm great. Yes. <laughs> I only did cut out one thing I should have left in, which I will admit. I well, There was one encounter with Snorlax I forgot to leave in. Oh boy. I think that's why one of the episodes got really short, like, 20 minutes or something. Because I ended up cutting it out. I was beating the shit out of him, and then he killed a Pokemon and I ran away. And then he was gone. I was like, FUCK! Ugh. Well, no, he... He yawned and went to the mountains. Yes, yes, he yawned and went to the mountains after I ran away. Right. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> like, he wakes up, he gets angry, I run off. Oh, alright, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's reasonable. Fuck you! Yeah. <sighs> you know what? I haven't been excited for movies in a long time. Now I think about it. Then again, the way the, movies the, the movie industry ri is right now. You like how AMC's trying to go after a movie? producers and movie movie production companies oh god why haha <laughs> <laughs> Moltres is frozen it makes no sense but fuck it but yeah because other you know they're trying to put movies on video on demand on like Netflix and Hulu and stuff like that because people can't really go out to theaters right now okay and because AMC is a movie theater you know mm -hmm. They're really trying to make it so movies that are hyped up to be released to theaters don't get released to video on demand. So when a company decides to put a movie on video on demand, AMC decides, okay, fine. In that case, we'll never show you mo your movies in our theaters again. Okay. Extremely petty of them. And well, it doesn't really mean... help that the movie theater industry is dying. Well, kind I mean, of. the other, the, the I mean, because the thing is, like, um, with the movie theaters, like, especially with something like AMC, there like, we go. Yeah, like that, it is a business, and they're losing money. So obviously, you know, when you know the other companies don't supply you the things that you need to, you know, keep your business going, you know, you're gonna lose a lot of revenue, and naturally, you're gonna get pissed off. Yeah. Well, they're also not in a good spotlight because multiple times during this ahem, pandemic, they have tried mm -hmm. to reopen. Yeah. And have gone against it because of backlash. Including one time, they said they would open and would not allow you to wear a face mask inside. Oh boy. Yeah, they're... They're very... They're being very tone deaf to the situation, basically. Yeah. But yeah, like you said, they're a business. They're trying to make money. They're trying to say what they think they can to get people to come back. But everything mm -hmm. they say backfires. Then again, now's not the time yeah. for people to be gathering in large areas like that. Yeah, I mean, hell, like, you know, the best case scenario you can do, I would say for a movie theater, 
Uh, because let's say, like, let's see, like, each seat is about roughly, like, what? Um, couple feet. A couple feet wide, yeah. So, I would say, like, if you're able to... Every second or third seat. Yeah, every, every... I would say keep only, like, seats available, like, three apart. Okay, yeah. Um, and, and try so, not have like, people line up with each other in a row as well. And then, you know, having... And then having, um... Uh, different rows. Um, like I would say about, like, maybe every other row available. Oh, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And just for good measure, not have them be, like, directly in front of or behind the next row in front of or behind them. Yes. It could be, like, a little diagonal pattern. Yeah, it'd be, like, it'd be, like, one-eighth of their seating capacity, but if you want to make any money at all, which maybe for them doesn't feel like it's worth it. Yeah. Because they're all the costs for getting the movie running and all that, and the other employees having to work there, so... Yeah. It might just... And you know the... You know the funny thing is, actually? You know the very last movie I saw in theaters right when this whole thing started? Sonic the Hedgehog movie? Dang. Hmm? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, same here. <laughs> when I was... That's, that was weird. I remember I watched it in theaters in March. Yeah, and I... there was like literally like no one there. I watched it like... it was like it was just me, my girlfriend, and like I think there was like three other people. Yeah, in the theater. Gonna... Yeah, I gotta say that movie wasn't as bad as I thought it would be because I knew it was Paramount behind it, so I was just like, oh boy, this could be bad. It could be like one of their generic movies. It had a lot of those generic themes to it. Oh, hey, Koshi's here. Hey. All right, whenever he gets on, but yeah. In case you but, didn't hear yeah, us, it, we were talking about the uh, movie industry, and we're mentioning we we're just about talking about the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. But yeah, I guess my thoughts on it, real quick, uh, while he's getting set up. Yep. Basically, I mean, I knew going into it that I had low expectations for it. That at best it was probably going to be a run-of-the-mill kind of fish out of water kind of story. Right. Right. And just from the opening scene, I'm like, and sure enough, that's exactly what we got. Like I said, I knew it was by Paramount. That's how I knew it wasn't going to be great. But well, it did... even even still, like a lot of the subtle references too, like they were, they felt natural. It didn't feel poor. Yeah, yeah, the movie definitely felt better than I was expecting it to. Although this is just a nitpick complaint. Why is the city called Green Hills? Because they wanted to tie it with the first game. Yeah, but... If anything, because it's a city... ...ass place... ...you should've gone with Station Square! Details, details! <laughs> God, it's not like they're going after every single thing in the Sonic universe to really know what they're going on. Also, hi! Random Kingslayer has joined the chat. Again. Yes! <laughs> Kingslayer has arrived! We were talking about the movie industry and just started talking about the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, which I... I... It was a little better than I expected it to be. I mean... Jim Carrey made the movie better, thankfully. Oh, definitely. I, 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 I was, even from the first trailer, I was gonna see it anyway just for Jim Carrey. Mm -hmm. His eccentricness fit very me. well. Like, yeah, I still uh, haven't seen the movie, so I have no real opinion of it. Okay, but yeah, we'll say Jim Carrey makes the movie, but it is about as generic as you'd expect, probably. Yes. That's the best way to sum it up. That seems about right. Jim Carrey makes it enjoyable. The rest of it's just... okay. Otherwise, yeah. Yeah, it's just by the numbers, like a lot of typical movie cliches in it and all that. I mean, hell, like, the the main, like, human lead, like, the actor, like, he's always in a lot of mediocre uh, movies that... Like, outside of, like, the X-Men movies. I mean, I won't blame him. He was alright in it. Yeah, like, but it's just like... It seems like it's always been a pattern ever since uh, the original uh, X-Men uh, movie trilogy ended. Like, they just gave him a lot of um, mediocre movies. Right, right. Yeah, I was say, like, no one would make a really good Sonic movie? If they had it be a mostly animated movie without any humans in it at all! But why would they do that? Freaking Hollywood, man! Hollywood doesn't really care about animated movies as far as I can tell, unless yeah. you're Disney or Pixar. 
or in the rare case, DreamWorks, yep. or for some strange reason, if you're Blue Sky Studios in that one rare instance where you feel like watching another Ice Age yeah. movie again. Or Illumination. <laughs> well, I mean, Disney owns Blue Sky Studios now, so Ice Age is under the Disney umbrella. Right. Oh, wow. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd also be Illumination. You should only the know fucking... that movie for one franchise. One of the most annoying animated franchises we've dealt with in our day. Hey, hey, at least something came before that that was actually decent. Yeah, the yeah, first one. The Despicable Me movies I did like. Well, I've seen the first one, I haven't seen the, the first sequel. One's good. The sequel is focused more on the minions, of course. Figures as much. The freaking movie equivalent of the rabbits. Yeah. Bite hey. me. Yeah. And hey, rabbits came first, and they were better. They only became, well... They became annoying with good. sequels. Yeah, in the sequels. It's like, they only became questionably better when they had the, um... XCOM Mario game, yes. of all things. Kingdom Battle was really good, and I still like the first Raving Rabbids game. Which, don't forget, was originally a Rayman game! Yeah. It was all minigames, but that's beside the point. They were still fun, and they actually took good advantage of the Wii, I thought. It was good, mindless fun. It's still that that's all kind of Rayman humor, a lot of the a lot of weird little musical numbers, and the rabbits were really weird creatures, similar to what you dealt with in Raymans 2 and 3. Like, it felt like a legit Rayman game as, well, yeah, not main game as it felt. I do find it humorous mm. that as they were trying to find their way, uh, the, uh, what your MacGuffin is is trying to find freaking plungers so you can climb your way out of your cell. Yeah, you're just trying to yeah. break out of prison. <laughs> I really did like that game. I still have it. Although doing mm. an LP of that would not be... I don't know. It doesn't seem like it'd be very fulfilling. <laughs> it's just a bunch of mini-games. Exactly. So unless you have enough people around you, yeah. or... And you can do multiplayer with it. it, which is neat. I was, I was gonna say, like, um, something like that. Like, oh, you mean like us doing Mario Party? Yeah, well, this is a little different. It's like only mini-games, and like, that is it. There is kind of a single-player mode which you go through to unlock those minigames, but it's... I don't know. It can get a little well, it's old. It's just minigames, like a minigame collection. It's kind of difficult to pull it off because the only series that, in theory, pulled it off well without too much backlash was the Wario where games yeah because they're all very they're all yes, very no, freaking short came super fast it was it was very very crazy like it like tackled like that that attention that add urge everybody feels every once in a while just to keep going somewhere different like every few seconds it was very exciting <laughs> i remember i got the first one for gamecube i was just like Huh, I don't know what this game's like. Well, technically, that, technically that's a remake of the first one from the Game Boy Band. Yeah, I know. I know. I still call it the first one, because it's basically the same game. But they added multiplayer features. Yeah. And well... That game, that was never really... Well, I don't hate them, but it's just not my cup of tea. I get and it. Again, it's a multi-game multi sort of thing, so yeah. it's kind of like, eh. I mean, yeah. I had it, I was just like, but... eh. I don't know what this could be like, but it could be okay. After playing for like 20 minutes, I was like, you know, this is actually strangely addicting. Mm -hmm. It's kind it's of how quick it is. Yeah. Because the thing with mini games only games is like the thing is that if they last for um, too long, it starts to become grating. Mm -hmm. And there's also the idea that some mini games you may end up having sameness problems. Yeah. Which is apparently what happened with Crash Bash. Oh yeah. Yeah, I didn't hate Crash Bash, but it did get a little old. I kind of forgot about it. Also, why didn't you get the Max Elixir MJ? I don't know. Honestly, I forgot what my setup was going to be for this. <laughs> God but, damn it. But like, hey. Here's why. Because, because... Shut up. Fuck! I'm attacked from both sides now. Fuck! <laughs> God damn it. You can't escape. Apparently not. Speaking of escaping, that'll be the end of this episode. <laughs> and we caught Moltres. You missed that. You missed me run away from him, too. Like yep. a dunce. Good job. <laughs> but I caught him in the end, thanks to retrying and freezing him. I froze Moltres. <laughs> that also doesn't make sense. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I would think. Oh, wait till next gen. Like, hey, Entei was frozen. Entei ran away. You would think. Uh, you would think that fire Pokemon would be immune to freezing, but 
Well, then again, freezing worked differently in Gens 1 and 2. Well, Mostly 1. The only ones with uh, any sort of uh, frozen immunity are ice types, and that's only from ice type moon. Yeah, still you'd think fire would be immune, because they are fucking fire! But whatever. Uh, ice is kind of... Well, we can discuss it next part. Yep. All right, so yeah. come, back, some, come back next time for the longest episode of the series, because, well, it's time for the finale, quote-unquote. The Elite... Yep. The entirety of the Elite Four. 